Ah, uh, winter in Ohio. Is there anything better? That's me being sarcastic. Actually, everything is better. It's been right. snowing like this for three days now. You become like a caged animal. It's like, I just I want to be outside carving or I want to do this. So I'm able to carve indoors, but not on the bigger stuff, the smaller stuff. So this is kind of a follow-up video to my chainsaw carving jig I made. I still use that jig, but I started thinking to myself, that's great, but what if I want to raise the piece I'm working on or lower the piece I'm working on? So I came up in an affordable way or kind of an adaption to my jig. A lot of the carvers, you see them using those hydraulic lifts. Those are great, but they're expensive. I use different size logs, my carving podiums. I use uh, four by fours. I stack them kind of like a log cabin stack, you know, depending on how high I want my carving because you know, when you're carving for a while, your back pays the price, you know. It's like you'll come home after a long day of carving, especially if you're using heavier chainsaws and you're doing a lot of, you're using muscles you don't normally use or you're using them in ways you don't normally use them. So it's very important to be able to have your carving at a level that's the easiest on your back. So I'm going to show you a couple of my techniques, a couple of ways I do. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so first off, we're going to go over everything you're going to need for this build. Uh, a 4x4, four four, two foot long, or you could use a 2x4 if you like, but I like using the thicker, girthier pieces of wood because in case your chainsaw starts taking divots out of it, a uh, 2x4 won't last very long. So if you have an old scrap piece of 4x4, four four, all you need is a two foot section for this. I bought all the hardware I bought was for making two of these. All right, so one on each end of the the four by four. If you only need one or you only want to do one, then this is going to cost you half of what I spent. And in all, I only spent $25, $26 for everything you see here. You got two and a three quarter inch threaded rods. Now these are a foot long, but they come in longer sections. But for doing this small jig, uh, one foot section is plenty. Two three quarter inch nuts and make sure when you're there at the hardware store that you test them on the threaded rod to make sure that the, the thread counts the same and that the nut fits because you want the nut to be able to move freely all the way up and down the rod. Okay, you're also going to need two of the three quarter inch thread long nuts and uh, I'll show you why you'll need those in a little bit. But two of the three quarter inch long nuts and do the same thing. Test it on the actual threaded rod while you're there at the hardware store to make sure it fits because it's going to need to spin freely up and down the rod just like the short nut. And then finally you're going to need two of these half inch plates. Now I know you're saying half inch plates it's three quarter inch rod. I know but you're going to want it to fit really tight on there so even though it's a three quarter inch threaded rod you're going to go with the half inch plate. Is it a tighter fit and you don't want it to spin as easily and freely as the nuts do. So minus the cost of a 4x4, four four, assuming you have a scrap piece that you're going to use, the entire cost for doing two of these was right around $26. So first thing you have to do is decide where you want the threaded rod to go. So I usually go about two inches in from each end of the board, drill a pilot hole, and then you're going to get a bigger bit and drill the hole with the nut it's going to fit into. Okay, so make sure when you're going to drill the hole that the nut's going to get sunk down into, make sure the drill bit is slightly smaller than the nut because you want to be able to pound the nut into the board and have it fit real snug. If you make the hole the same size as the nut, then the nut's going to want to spin around in there and it's, going to, it's not going to work for you. Like right here, I'm drilling a practice hole just to make sure that the drill bit isn't too big for the nut. So do a practice run first and then you go to your main holes and drill those out. So now after you have the hole drilled, you can see that the nut is too big. It won't fit in the hole. That's what you wanted because now you're going to stick the drill bit about halfway into the hole and go in a circular motion and kind of work it around like this so you could start making almost like a funnel shape to the hole so that you could pound the nut down in there. Only going halfway down in the hole and then you're holding the drill bit at an angle. Just go slow and work it around the hole to get the top of the hole you want to be wider than the bottom of the hole so when you pound the nut in it holds it in there nice and tight no movement so when you're pounding the nut in don't go crazy at first go nice and slow because you need that nut to get sunk level if it goes in at an angle then the rod's going to be crooked or the rod's going to get screwed in at an angle so make sure you're pounding the nut in about halfway to where it's nice and snug and there's no movement so now the purpose of the small nut is to get spun down 
on the long nut that's secured inside the wood. There. So you find the height you need when you're carving. You find the height, your desired height, then you spin the small nut on top of the long nut, and then that rod won't spin around on you when you're carving. It locks it in place. So now I'm using two one foot by one foot uh, boards. Could be, I uh, these are inch and three quarters or two inches. So make sure you don't make these uh, discs any larger than a foot because you're going to want them to be able to spin without rubbing into each other or bumping into each other. And this is going to be the carving platform. You want to drill a hole directly, find your center, drill a hole all the way through because there's going to be a screw that would go up through that into your whatever piece of wood you're going to carve. Uh, you'll see that in a minute. But do the disc. Uh, this is how I do. Drill a hole right through the middle. Put your plate centered so that the hole you drill through the middle is directly in the middle of the middle of that plate. Uh, you'll see. Right, so now you take your your discs over, you put them on the threaded bar, and you try them out. You know, you could tighten the disc. You could tighten that really tight onto the threaded rod so that that part doesn't move, and then all you have is the threaded rod moving through the 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 long nut, and then you could adjust the height that way. Um, and now you have two independent carving platforms. They could be at different heights, so you could have two projects going at once. And if you don't have a jaw horse, you could just clamp this right to the corner of the workbench, corner of a table. Just clamp it down real good, and, and then you could do it that way. So again, just screw the carving plate right into the bottom of the block that you're going to carve, and then you put it on the threaded rod, and you're good to go. Hi, carvers. I hope that helped. Happy carving. That's just a tip. <laughs>